today we'll be putting a plus minus $200 mini PC to the test. To be exact, this is the Ace Magic S1, the version with the Intel N95 CPU, 16GB of RAM and a 1TB SSD. However, today's video not only concerns the model and today's spotlight, but also other similar and comparable products by many competitors, as there are now quite a number of mini PCs on the market that are based on the same Intel N95 CPU. A special feature today's S1 by Ace Magic comes with is its integrated, easily customizable 1.9 inch screen, which not only displays the date and time, but also the system load, CPU power draw, and its temperature. We will not only be discussing overall performance of the device for work and gaming, but also its upgrade paths, ports, power consumption, temperatures, and noise levels in various use cases. At the time of this video, for instance, on the official Ace Magic website for the 512GB SSD version, we have to spend about 200 US dollars, while the 1TB version would cost us roughly $240, which still is to be considered as quite attractive price-wise. If you were to order the same device on Amazon, you would have to spend a little more, though. Now is a mini PC costing $200 or $300 ultimately a good choice for you? Let's find out where the strengths and weaknesses lie here. In addition to the main device itself, the scope of delivery includes a base slash stand onto which the mini PC can be placed upright, held in place by magnets by the way. There is also a power supply rated at 48 watts, also included an HDMI cable and boring paperwork. Now the outer shell the device's aesthetics are kept very simple and most importantly compact, with dimensions of 41 by 124 by 128 mm it is definitely one of the smaller models of already small mini PCs. At the core of the S1 device is the popular Intel N95 CPU with 4 cores and 4 threads. The CPU was released in the first quarter of 2023. Although it only supports single channel memory, the device sports 16GB of DDR4 clocked at 3200 MHz. In terms of storage, there is also a pretty speedy M.2 NVMe SSD in here, performing quite well, mind you. What about ports here? On the one side, we get two USB 3.2 Gen 1 and two additional USB 2.0 ports. Moving around the corner, we generously have two HDMI outputs for two monitors at our disposal, as well as one gigabit LAN in a double pack. Finally, a 3.5mm jack and a Kensington lock. A pretty interesting choice of I.O., certainly advantageous for one or the other area of application. In my opinion, for most regular users, there should have been a few more USB ports, especially USB Type-C. In terms of USB connectivity, the total number found on here is rather measly. I would also have liked seeing an SD card reader on here. Windows 11 Pro is already pre-installed out of the box and was activated by Ace Magic using a volume MAC license key. As expected, software for both the integrated screen and the minor RGB lighting is already installed as well. In terms of RGB features, we only see the absolute basics but the lighting can be turned off and honestly, I don't really care for it. I find the software for controlling and further adjusting the display on the 1.9 inch screen much more interesting. We can choose from several preset designs and themes or customize the display even with our very own image as the background. Since the S1 mini PC can be placed both upright and lying down, the contents on the display also can be rotated using this aforementioned software. So the screen certainly is a nice gimmick, but what I personally think it lacks is the option to completely disable it, turn off the screen. If the device is shut down normally, but remains plugged in, the screen too remains on permanently, but then displays the time instead of system resources. In itself nice, but an option to turn it off would have been appropriate. Maybe there is an option and I'm just too stupid to find it. In any case, I didn't spot anything even within the BIOS. So this whole screen thing still needs some ironing out, if you ask me. What I think is good is that both Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 are on board. 
The cover on the device's bottom or side, depending on how you want to look at it, is held in place by magnets and can easily be removed in a user-friendly manner so that we can carry out upgrades if needed. We are granted access to the RAM here, but also to the SSD as well as an additional M.2 slot. I would like to once again praise Ace Magic for opting to go for a clean Windows install. There is no bloatware on here like pre-installed third-party programs, apart from the two tools to control the lighting and screen of course. I can further confirm that the RAM in here is actually running at its specified speed of 3200 MHz. Believe it or not, that's not always the case when dealing with these types of devices. Now when pinning the CPU to 100% in the Cinebench 2024 test, we initially read out a CPU clock speed of around 2.7 GHz, which is maintained even after several minutes in this state, and that is rather unusual but can certainly be viewed positively. To my surprise, we aren't even knocking those 2.7 GHz down when additionally firing up Furmark to stress the CPU's integrated graphics unit. So it's no wonder that the N95 CPU in today's Ace Magic S1 is slightly ahead of other devices tested with the same CPU, but only minimally so, of course. Nonetheless, it is clear that an N95 is not the greatest CPU out there and therefore positions itself noticeably behind even more powerful laptops. However, the pricing of this device should not be forgotten. After all, we are talking of a fully-fledged mini-PC in a price range of two to three hundred dollars. Accordingly, great performance cannot be expected in slightly more demanding areas of application and programs such as image and video editing, for instance. Not to mention gaming, although less demanding and or older game titles might run somewhat fine with this machine but be prepared to lower your expectations regarding frame rate and graphics fidelity. But the S1 device can easily handle watching 4K videos or streaming movies. It does well and smoothly in that aspect without any hiccups. Therefore, the mini PC doesn't appear to perform too badly in everyday tasks such as web surfing, office work, etc. So what are the power consumption, temperatures and noise levels like? I was able to measure extremely low 12 watts when idling. When watching movies and videos, we still remain below 20 watts. Only once the CPU and GPU part of the processor are running at their absolute max, we do get to 31 watts, which is actually nothing compared to a fairly regular, somewhat outdated desktop PC. The temperatures are always in the green. In my case, they didn't even reach the 70 degrees Celsius mark which in itself would have been totally fine as well. The S1 Mini PC is not a fanless device, but operates extremely quietly, so that under full load I could hardly measure and notice any audible difference in noise level compared to when in idle. Conclusion: The Ace Magic S1 and comparable models within this price range offer us a reasonable overall package. For $200 to $300, we are offered a powerful office machine that is capable of even a little bit more. Of course, don't expect some kind of performance beast that plows through advanced, demanding productive workloads. But let's put it this way, when accepting a few compromises, even that is possible. On the one hand, I find the integrated 1.9 inch display intriguing, but on the other hand, a bit unnecessary since it sure drives up the price. The same device without a screen at an even lower price would have certainly been a bit more appealing to most people, I believe. But then again, there are people who love gimmicks like that. If anything, I would have liked seeing a better implementation of the screen using software since not everyone's interested in monitoring system utilization and the like. I also would have liked seeing more USB ports along with an SD card reader. However, I do love the fact there are two HDMI and Gigabit LAN ports respectively. Either way, the Ace Magic S1 is very power efficient, it runs cool and quiet, and all in all, despite the shortcomings mentioned, ultimately doesn't leave a bad impression. That is enough for me to recommend the device. What's your take on this? Are you convinced by mini PCs within this price range, or would you rather spend a little more for better performance? If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, if not, hit the dislike button. With that in mind, thank you for watching and until the next one.